Luke um, was diagnosed with generalized epilepsy at the age of five. Up until that point, he had had a pretty normal childhood. Um, and just one night we were here at the house, he had a big seizure. His first seizure that he ever had, I was the one who was with him. And so, I mean, I didn't know what was going on. I was 10 and I was freaking out. I asked him if he could hand me something and he just stood up. He couldn't hear me and he started walking in a circle and then he just fell over and turned blue. Um, so we got admitted to Cook Children's and he um, got diagnosed with generalized epilepsy. About the first three years of his diagnosis, he was okay, he was pretty stable. Um, he still went to school, limited school. So, but then about three, probably about three, three and a half years ago, Luke's epilepsy kind of took a turn. And a few years ago, his primary neurologist recommended an epilepsy evaluation. So while I am a child neurologist, I also have an extra training and specialty in epilepsy and board certification. So took his case on a few years ago, looked at everything, made some changes, and we were making some improvement. And then in about, in about early 2020, we just were no longer getting the improvement we were seeing with medications. He got diagnosed with Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, LGS, and that's a very severe form of epilepsy that the kids that get diagnosed with this, they fail a lot of medications. Um, Luke's life just became more isolated. He hasn't been able to go to school now in three years. He is homebound. Dr. Cater, his epileptologist, um, sat me down and basically we had the really hard discussion of she was very concerned about life, um, Luke's life being shortened because of these seizures. I met Luke and his mom and introduced to them the idea that DBS might um, be uh, something to consider uh, and might offer some help, not a promise that it would make him seizure free, but just the hope that it would at least keep him out of the hospital with these recurrent episodes of long and dangerous seizures that he was having um, quite frequently. At that time, um, this deep brain stimulator was being put in some adults here in the country. It was FDA approved. It had been approved for about 16 months at that time. We were on board from the beginning because, I mean, just the trust I have in the physicians there and Luke's neurology team, they're just amazing. They have never, ever given up on trying to help Luke. And I just find that, you know, inspiring. A deep brain stimulation is a form of a broader area that we call neuromodulation, or essentially delivering small electrical impulses to target air, targeted areas of the brain. So that surgery is we do that in the MRI, in the MRI scanner. And then we have um, two incisions, okay? And then we're gonna drill a hole about a nickel size, between a diamond and a nickel. And that's where the electrodes go in now. So what that looks like is that we go in and make an incision and then drill these two holes. And then on top of this, we build this little plastic tower that's attached to your skull. And then we go into the MRI scanner, and what that does is the MRI scanner and then the software, computer software program, sees that tower and sees where it's aiming, and then we make adjustments to that. It's got these little mechanisms that allow the tower to move. And that then tells us precisely where we're going. And then once we're happy with the aiming of it, it's kind of like a video game. Once we're happy with where it's aimed, then we slide in the electrodes. This is the part that goes down into the brain. It's held in place by a cap that is screwed into the skull. It attaches to a thicker wire, which comes down the inside of the neck. And it's thicker because the neck moves a lot. And then this plugs into a generator. This is what we program. This is how we tell the machine, how we tell the, the lead what electricity needs to be delivered. This is all done through the skin, so this is under the skin. You just hold this over the generator. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm done. Good. Turn this thing on, okay. 
So this is the half that will talk to your machine. Looking for your device. There we got it. Okay. All right. Show me both your hands. Get both your hands. Okay. And reach up here and touch my finger and touch your nose. There you go. You got this down. And switch hands. Okay. And give me one more how now brown cow. How now brown cow. Okay. All right. All right. You are officially activated and ready to go. Okay. Ready to tell Dr. Marks. Thanks, ma'am. Say thank you, sir. Okay. All right. We're excited. Okay. We're excited about getting this done. Oh, man. We are, too. We've been waiting for this day, haven't we, Luke? So about two, um, about two and a half years ago, Lexi um, wrote to make a wish to get Luke a wish. Hi, my name is Lexi Wagner. I am 17 and I am contacting you about referring my brother to your program. Luke is 11. He was diagnosed with generalized epilepsy at the age of five. Hi, Ronnie. My name is Chris. Right here to me, Laura. And I'm in Hope Children's right now. I don't know, but I was surprised at my backyard. Right, and this time I'm gonna head to what it is. I know I love to dream of. Never in my wildest dreams, though, did I think it would be something to this extent. Um, they contacted uh, Wish to Play, and it's two guys that. Um, they basically build these awesome playhouses and dream houses and she sheds for people. And for every 10 they build, they donate one to Make-A-Wish. It's just his own little area that has given him some joy and some hope um, that he can come out here and have a little bit of independence. Um, there's a camera in here that he can turn on. I watch him from in the house so he can be out here by himself. I've seen a big difference since the surgery um, a few weeks ago. He's still been having seizures, but he's been clustering less, and he's his speech has been a lot more clear recently. He's still been pretty sore from it since he has the actual battery pack of it in his um, lower right abdomen. And so he's still been kind of moving slow from that, but in the past week, that's gotten a lot better. We are so excited and we are all very optimistic and we're all rooting for him. So we all, he has a big team at home, big team here and probably across the country now too. So our hope is that not only will this immediately start to show improvement in his seizures, um, but give him a chance to have a better quality of life, to be able to go back to school in person, to be able to go outside and not worry about falling down or having a seizure, um, to be able to come off of hopefully some of his seizure medications and he can go back to school, be with his friends, do the things that other 13 year old boys are doing. He tells people his best friends are the nurses and doctors at Cook Children's and everybody there. And I mean, that's amazing. I'm glad he feels that way. But then on the other hand, that's really, you know, it's kind of sad that he doesn't understand that, you know, that there's that kids his age, what they're out doing and what he's missing. Um, he just wants to go ride trains. That's all he wants. He wants to ride trains. He wants to be around, be around people. My main hopes aren't for 13-year-old Luke, they're for 18-year-old Luke, they're for 30-year-old Luke. I'm hoping for some normalcy just along the way. You know, just what my hopes for Luke are just a little sense of normalcy. He, he has no recollection. He doesn't remember before he was five, before he had seizures. So seizures have been a way of life for him. So my, my hope for Luke is to improve his quality of life. And I think that this is important because there are many, many Lukes out there uh, in the world. Uh, and we're really hoping that this, that this technology and the way that we're applying it um, will, will be beneficial for them.